And that's the beauty with this football club. Doesn't matter who we are, how old we are, we've all got some sort of history with blues, something we can all relate to. So this is a video that I've put together, a nice intro of my experience and many of yours, I'm sure with blues. It's a similar situation getting relegated. It's something that we've done before, something we can look forward to, the ambition of the new owners. Let's have it, it's a different era. Come on, you blue boys. Keep right on, blue now. In entertaining the public. Absolutely. I want to see goal mouth action. I want to score more goals than the opposition. I don't care if the opposition score five as long as we score six or seven. I want to entertain the fans. I want to fill that stadium. I think um, it is a sleeping giant and I want to be part of when it's awoken and grows and grows and grows because the Birmingham fans have been waiting for something to happen for a long time. I want to talk to Birmingham City um, because I feel that the club is a sleeping giant and I feel that um, if they've got ambition at Birmingham, which I'm sure they have from the outside, that they've already, uh, when Mr Sullivan and Count Brady come in last year, uh, Terry was struggling at the bottom and they gave him a lot of money to get out of trouble, which he has done, and he spent quite a considerable amount of money, and um, I do feel that money will be uh, spent on the ground as well, and if that's the case, then they're very ambitious, and obviously I would like a bigger stage um, to, to see how my players perform. Um, I'm devastated for everybody really involved in the football club. Uh, to get relegated is, uh, and I've experienced it a number of times, um, you know, is devastating. If people have made mistakes, you know, players make mistakes, and we know that uh, the board have made mistakes. Um, but the fans have. Congratulations on the completion of the transaction. How does it feel? It feels great. Um, I want to thank the entire team, both in Birmingham City and, and my team, on completing an incredibly complex transaction. But we are just thrilled. This is an unbelievable opportunity that is really centered around the unlimited potential of Birmingham City. Sixth in the table. But today, Birmingham City are relegated. After so many close shaves with relegation, their luck has finally run out. Come on, it was absolutely mind-blowing. Literally nothing in all the years I've been on this planet following this football club. You could have prepared me for that. Ecstatic. Yeah, yeah. What a night, what a day. How was you feeling last night? Oh, it was the best, weren't it? Yeah. I'll get no better than that. That was a night to remember. We're going to the moon. Come on. Yeah, we're going to come back better, stronger. We're going to have a deep cleanse. We're going to smash it. Whatever happens. Although I do hope we actually stay up and invest all the money we're going to invest to go for the Premiership instead. Come on, Steve, keep right on. Hold the blues. Come on, hold the blues. On blues. Where are we going? To the moon. <laughs> Message really to the blue noses. Keep right on. Brilliant. And stick to our motto. F E. -A. Got out of jail, I think, you know, with the late penalty. Uh, fair play to Alfie May. And I think Alfie May is another interesting issue because I think Alfie May is going to struggle to get into that team now. Keep right on. Keep right on. Hey Ian, keep right on, baby. Oh, fucking blues. Keep right on. Keep right on. Oh, on, you blue boys. Keep right on. Keep right on. So this is a special podcast because we got two Blues fans joining me today. Steve Trainer from the project and Nick from Chatting Blues. Now, this is the beauty of being a Blues fan because it just shows how special our club is because even though you go to the game sometimes and people haven't met, you feel like you've known each other for years and this is the beauty of doing these things. So, Steve and Nick, how are you doing, lads? I'm all good, Jay. How are you, mate? I'm all right, thank you, mate. Nick, how you doing, son? Yeah, I'm good, Jay. Good to uh, good to be on the stream, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not too bad, mate. Long weekend, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it took it out of me. Uh, but yeah, I'm all good, brother. 
Good lad. Uh, the last time we spoke, Steve, I was actually looking, and it was um, we haven't done one of these for a good few weeks. And the last one we done was, I think it was the Rangers game. So we've <laughs> played a few games since then. So uh, yeah, I just want to just gauge your um, your thoughts from where we left off from the Rangers game going into the season, like what your thoughts have been of Blues and stuff, and what Chris Davis has been doing with the lads. I think after the Rangers game, you know, everyone was a bit boy boy. So I think it's probably our best, definitely our best pre-season performance. And then we went into the Albion game. Yeah. You know, one each, and then we beat them 4-1. And I think everyone was very happy with it. And But if you look at the team then, and you look at the starting 11 uh, from against Reading, it's a very different team now. You know, we've got Willemson, Clara... Uh, Hanson, there's a lot of players that have been added since that day, and of course, Jake Stansfield. Yeah. So it, it's been a, a slow growth, I think. And I think the Reading game, I think the pressure got to them a little bit, you know. And I don't think the game was perhaps they didn't play the game perhaps the way that Chris Davis wanted them to. We got out of jail, I think, you know, with the late penalty. Uh, fair play to Alfie May, and uh, I think Alfie May is another. Interesting issue because I think Alpha May is going to struggle to get into that team now. Yeah, you're the problem, Yeah, the problem when you buy when you're buying players like that on the hoof, if you want. So for instance, if you're Alfie May and you sign for blues, yeah. Fantastic. You know, you're the man, everyone loves you. You score four goals in your first five games, and then they sign Jack Lansfield. So suddenly Alfie May is a you know, the and the way Chris Davis has done it is he's played Jay up front. Yeah, Jay Stansfield has the number nine position. He's the main man. So Alfie Master sort of fit in around that. And the difficulty with him doing that is that there's a lot of players that can play around Jay Stansfield that are probably better at doing it than Alfie May is. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen it against, I think against Huddersfield, he struggled a bit. Mm -hmm. I think on Saturday, he, I, I'm, I can't remember exactly when they took him off, but they took him off fairly early. And I think Alfie's going to struggle. And it's a shame because, you know, we all love him to bits, don't we? Yeah. Uh, and, and, but see, but see, going back to your original question, what else has happened is we've got an amazing midfield partnership with Pike and Iwata, oh, uh, which, yeah. we didn't, which we didn't have at the start of the season. And I think everyone ex expected Mark Leonard to be in that position that Iwata's taken up. Mark yeah. Leonard can't get in the side, you know. It, it's we've got a lot of quality players, uh, but the football has been immense. You know, I've loved watching it. Uh, I love watching them in defence. I like the passing. I don't mind the ball being passed across their own six-yard box. It shows a certain amount of confidence. It's the kind of thing yeah. Man City do. And for me, I love it. We had a bit of a backward step on Saturday, but the team's evolving. And Chris Davis probably tried something on Saturday and didn't quite work out and we paid the penalty for it. But, you know, I, that's my opinion. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I just love talking to you, mate. I love uh, love getting you on and stuff and talking to you, Steve. Mm. What do you think about what uh, Steve was saying? Yeah, I think, like, um, I think I said it, like, before before the season starts, about the first 10 games and, and, and having a look where we're at after 10 games. And I said to you, Jay, I said, if we're within touching distance of the top two, I mean, like, within three points of the top two, I'll be happy because I thought there'd be this gelling period. Um, and there is still, to a certain degree, of a, of, a, of us trying to gel. Um, but, you know, I, I'd, I'd have snapped your hand off, mate, if you, if you lived, if, if, if we, like, after 10 games, where we are now, I'd have snapped your hand off. Uh, especially with the the amount of players we brought in, and 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 just quickly on Alfie, mate, it's 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 such a shame because he is that number nine. Do you know what I mean? And he started off so well, and then and then like uh, Pete said, you know, we brought in Stansfield, and now it's it's kind of like trying to get May into the squad, into the starting eleven. Sorry, and and them two working as a pair. Do you know what I mean? And and from what we've seen so far, it just doesn't seem to be working. Um, we know Stansford was brought in for the long term anyway, so you know I would imagine Alfie May uh, probably won't if if you know touch wood we go up this season first time of asking. I would imagine Alfie May will have a bit part to play in the in the championship, but um, it's it's it. it 
it, it's really tough on Alfie and May because, you know, if I, if it, if I was Chris Davies, I'd play Williamson behind uh, Stansfield. I'd play maybe Scott Wright out on the right and Hansen out on the left. Um, I think he's just under a lot of pressure to get both of them in the squad. Uh, on Saturday, like I say, um, I ended up watching it in the Georgia. I had a, I had a ticket for the game and... Uh, like all my plans for the weekend went out the window basically, and uh, so so I was watching it in the bar in the George at the back of the Tilton Road, and uh, it's only a small screen, uh, so I couldn't really analyse the game that well. You know, I've I've just watched the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> so, the lads, I've got a question for you. You know, because um, I mean, I was quite surprised we got. Stansfield in the end. I was over the moon, obviously, and I'm sure you two was as well. Um, but obviously before Stansfield come and Alfie May, he scored pretty much every game, didn't he, before we actually signed uh, Stano. Um, rather than playing them both both at the same time, couldn't he just like literally just sub one off for the other one? Or what's your thoughts on that, Steve? Just to... I don't think that's going to happen. No. I think it, I think Chris Davis has got it in his head that Jay Stansfield is the main man. He's going to occupy that main striking position because the other option would be to play Stansfield behind May and play May as the main striker. You know, and that would be, you know, I think a lot of people have had that in mind, but it's just not going to happen. With Chris Davis is not going to play in there, and and for my, you know, for what it's worth, in my opinion, he hasn't got enough strength. Uh, when I say strength, I don't mean physical strength. He hasn't got enough strength to play in those positions behind Stansfield. We've got too many good players that can fill those roles. Yeah. You know, you've got Will you got Willemson. I don't think we're particularly great with wingers, to be honest. Uh, that's my the, the 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 truth of it. I don't think we are. Uh Hansen, hot mm. and cold. Uh Wright looks good. And again, like a little bit hot and cold, seems to play in patches. So, you know, we got um Yokohama, who I don't think he's going to figure much this season. But we've got Laird to come back. Yeah. Who's going to, I think, will come back into the right. I mean, Gardner Hickman, to be fair to him, has, has, has done a magnificent job at right back. But he's no Laird. You know, I think Laird adds that additional dimension to the attack. I just don't think he's going to be able to fit Alfie May in. I think Alfie May is going to get, bit, you know, on and off the bench. That's my opinion. I think there's too much strength in the squad for him yeah. to demand a place. Mm -hmm. If Jay Stansfield hadn't have uh, hadn't have signed, then I think probably Alfie would have started. You know, definitely. But unfortunately, yeah, you know, it's the way it is, and I think Chris Davis has got his mind made up on that. What about you, Nick? Yeah, well, I think it's a difficult one. Sorry, uh, Steve, I called you Pete earlier. Um, right. you mate. Sorry, mate. Uh, yeah, I think I think he. He probably has got it in his head that, he, you know, the two of them need to start. You know, he's played a couple of games without May. Um, the, the the games we've seen and where they've both started in the start in 11. Uh, let's be honest, May's, I don't, May's not a number 10. You know, let's have it right. He's, he's, he's a, an out and out number nine. Do you know what I mean? And um, it's like, it's... it's I don't know, I, I, you know, without risk of repeating myself, I think we're better off with Williamson behind um, behind Stansfield, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, no. Williamson's such a talent, isn't he, you know? He, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, Williamson you can't really drop. And then, you know, and then, and then yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm a little bit disappointed in... If we're going on negatives, we're going to talk about concerns we've got. Like, like I said, first ten games buzzing. You know, I'm. It, it, there's a part of me that's. I'm. I'm glad we kind of got this first defeat out of the way, if that makes sense, because of the pressure of um everyone talking about going undefeated all season and that. Um, I think the international breaks come at the the right time as well, with Beale picking up a knock. Um. So yeah, it's going to be interesting, man. Um. Will he stick with keep playing Stansfield and May together? I think he'll keep trying until it either works or it doesn't work. Do you know what I mean, lads? I do. I think he he'll stick with it. Um, for me, from what I've seen of playing the pair of them, he's he's, he's not not great. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I just don't think they work together. To be honest, and 
and I think we've seen it several times now. I, I don't personally think he'll he'll continue to try it because it, they just can't play together. And it's not because they don't want to play together. It's because May's natural game is to be in the position that Stansfield's in. And when mm -hmm. he starts dropping deep, he loses himself and he's yeah. not good enough in that wide midfield mm -hmm. role. He just isn't, you know, that's not his position. And I feel really sorry for him. But, mm -hmm. you know, what you do when you got... 20 players that can probably start and you can only start 11. There's going to be nine that are left out. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, 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 I mean, he's a, he's a fan's favorite. Yeah. You know, if it was someone else, it probably wouldn't be quite so painful, you know, but, but we do love him. And uh, it's just, yeah. I, in my opinion, that's what's going to happen, but we'll see. Time will tell. He might play. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what the team is tomorrow, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We're playing tomorrow, mate. Right? Forgot about that. That's the, uh, we still, Great mile just could be it, Steve. Yeah. Uh, so, really, if we want to go to Wembley, we've got to win tomorrow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> because we we messed up a bit with Warsaw, didn't we? But, you know. Yeah. I can't believe it's been that long since we spoke. We've had so many games, Steve. And, uh, yeah, it's just really good to get you back on, mate, and uh, speak to you. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's the Rangers it's... game, weren't he? Yeah, and I think we've, you know, I think our fortunes have gone up and down a little bit. Uh, losing the two goals to Peterborough was, you know, was challenging. But luckily, we lost them in the first twenty minutes. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't have any doubt in my mind that we could pull that game back, and we did. But when you concede in, in the second half, then it becomes a little bit different. And on Saturday, I think the more the game went on, the more desperate we looked, and the more desperate we got, the more long balls we played, and the more long balls we played, the more Charlton gobbled them up. You know, it's like. It was a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think we were going to lose that game. Uh, I think if we'd have kept our heads a little bit, gone short, but that's history now. It's happened. Yeah, we move on, don't we? But Steve, I've got a question for you as well, because uh, me and Nick have spoke about this a few times. We've Our Blues have been playing, and we've seen the stats. You know, the stats are unreal, aren't they? Like the position, uh, possession that we've had. Um, absolutely brilliant. And it just goes to show what the plan is of the club and... Um, what Chris Davis is trying to implement on the squad and stuff and get him to play. Um, but I've found with Blues, and uh, Nick said the same as well, Like usually like within the first 10, 15 minutes, it's took them a while to find the feet. Do you think that's because the teams are coming at us or is that just Blues just trying to find the feet? Like, I think it's a mixture of the two. I think we always take a little bit of time to get our game. It's such a flowing game that you need to have five or ten minutes to get that passer moving, working, you know. They, yeah. they come to the play. In, in training, they use that one touch and pass all the time. They do it all the time. And it just takes a few minutes to get into it. But, of course, when the opposition uh, uh, 100 miles an hour pressing because they're fresh on the pitch, they want to show, you, you know, they want to beat us. They're on top of us straight away. But we have to weather that storm a little bit. And I think it's, mm. we're going to get that all the time. Uh, at home and away, because I think like the home the home gate, uh, you know, it's a big crowd to most teams, 27,000 for a League One game. And I think for a lot of them, it's something they haven't experienced before and it sort of fires them up, you know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The reason why I ask is because obviously we blues again. We've had a lot of media hype and stuff, haven't we? You know, we've spent... X amount on players. We spent this on the stadium and everything else. We know what the media is like with Blues. Um, but it was more of a case of, is it because it's been hyped up that much that these teams are pretty much like, right, we we are who we are, but we're not going to be scared of, you know, coming for you. That was... I, I think the thing with that, Jay, in all honesty, is like, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And yeah. Blues are... So social media aware. And of course, the more social media impressions we get, the more money we get from Nighthead. That's why you see Blues putting out so much stuff all the time, yeah. every day. It wasn't like this under the old regime, but the more impressions we get on social media around the world, the more money Nighthead put into the club. Uh, I forget exactly how much it is per 100,000 media impressions or something, you know, it, but we get more money. So we give ourselves that high profile. Yeah. If then we get shut down because of it, we can't complain about it. You know, we it's like that. We stick the, our head up above the parapet. If somebody shoots us, 
but it's just the way it goes. That's life, you know. But it's all about money. And the club's income at the moment is absolutely huge compared to what it was a year ago. And uh, and I think even if we're in, I think, you know, our, our income is probably more than most uh, championship teams. Yeah, it's unreal. Since, What's that? Yeah, since the end of last season. Madness. What about uni? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just um, you know, even going back a year, you know, the owners have just got the feet, you know, under the table. It's just a massive difference, you know. We're always going about it's, it's a completely different experience going down St Andrews uh, this season. It's unbelievable, you know. Sellouts, um, you know the 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 food stalls, just everything. Yeah, it's a pleasure, mate. It's an absolute pleasure. So so look, we lost on Saturday. Take it on the chin. It's um, it, you know. Like I said, it's took a little bit of pressure off off us as a club, I think, you know. And um, like I said, the international break's come at a great time. The club's definitely 100% on the rise. Do you know what I mean? Um, the future is bright for Blues. Um, and, you know, and I always say this, Donna Jane, it's time to jump on board, man. Do you know what I mean? If you've been if you've been not attending games for, for, for certain reasons over the last few years, jump on board, man, because it's going to be one hell of a ride. Do you know what I mean? Um, just, just really looking forward to to our next game. Now we just quickly touched on Shrew, Shrewsbury in the Bristol Street Motors, and um, I think that's a great tie to have in terms of let's see a few other players. You know, let's try, um, you know, uh, not not try a di different way of playing because he will always play the way he plays. Do you know what I mean? Um, Give the players a chance that he hasn't been picking. Yeah, I'd like to see that Yokohama. Uh, mm -hmm. On the left, if I'm being honest, um, there's a couple I'd like to see. I want to see Mark Leonard come back in on Tuesday. I don't think Yokohama, Yokohama made the bench, did he, at the weekend? No, no, he hasn't. The last two games, no, yeah. I think Leonard's not going to be a happy boy, you know. Uh, uh, we've got him from Leicester, you know, and uh, and, we, and I think they expect him to play, he expects to play. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, how can you drop a water at the moment? I oh, know. We're sport mm. for choice, isn't we? <laughs> we are sport for choice this season, isn't we, Steve? Well, I think the interesting thing as well, I don't know if you, but you both will be aware of the fact that Nighthead, uh, that um, uh, uh, the, the club have just, not Nighthead, uh, anyway, uh, the, 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 uh, the, blues comp the Blues company, not Nighthead. Uh, oh, uh, Shelby. 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 Shelby have just, um, increased the Blues loan from fifty million to a hundred million. Have they? Uh, yeah, in the last, yeah, in the last seven days. So I'm not sure, you know. So looking forward to January. Are we going to do a massive? I mean, January is not the best time to buy, but are we going to do it while we still haven't got FFP? There's yeah. another fifty million pound just being put into the pot. Mm. Uh, it's interesting to to think what that money is going to be used for. You, you know, it's uh, it's like if January comes and we we buy big, because what we got to think about is next season we don't we're going to have FFP on our back again. Yeah, what's happened this season doesn't matter. You know, uh, so we I I think we're probably buying while we can. Yeah, yeah, but I think come January he's going to know who's going to want around and who's not going to want around. Who's who's up to. You know who's up for the fight? Who hasn't got the quality and all that? So I'd imagine, um, yeah, investment in January in the areas we need. Uh, you know, I've always said it. I'd love to see a good goalkeeper coming. You know, a really good goalkeeper. What's good with his feet and can and and he's a good shot stopper. Um, you know, I'm not impressed at all, really, with these two goalkeepers. And uh, that that that's not having a dig at them. Do you know what I mean? I just think you have to be a really astute goalkeeper to play the way Chris Davis wants to play. So, yeah, well, I'd imagine, Steve, that we, we do invest in a certain couple of areas uh, come January. Um, I don't think it'll be a great deal. I think we, we, we might see one, two or three players coming. I'd definitely like to see a goalkeeper, but he might hold out till, till the... Till the summer transfer window in, in terms of the goalkeeping department. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And I wouldn't be surprised if um you know the ones we sent out on loan, like the, the likes of Tyler Roberts and, mm. and all them, that they they go uh in the summer. But um yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he, what he does in, in in the winter. 
I think it'd be. I think with Tyler Roberts and players like that, he's obviously you know the lone watch. Watch how they play. If they play well, if they perform well, and he thinks there's a, there's a place for them because we don't want to be buying players just because we can yeah. buy them. If we've got yeah. players we already have that can fill those positions, but yeah. I, I was thinking about it the other day. If you look at the team, how many of that team are going to sit comfortably in the championship? If you look through the team, okay, you can say perhaps the keeper, perhaps not. Felix will be fine. Clara will be fine. Two fullbacks. I think we led in Buchanan. Probably were playing any championship team. But then mm. you've got like a Water who came from Celtic. You've got, you know, is he going to be all right in the championship? He played for Celtic. You've got Wright who came from Celtic. You, you know, you've got player. You've got May who came from Charlton. So you've got a lot of players in that team who haven't played at championship level. So... We, there's going to be some questions asked, you know. Uh, I think we got one of the best. I think the back, the back four, as it stands, is a very, very strong back four. Yeah, yeah. you, you know that absolutely. I mean, Clara, what a signing he's been. Wow, mate. I was just about to say that, Steve. He, he's unbelievable, isn't he, Clara? Yeah, a human Bielik. Yeah, you know, if there's a better centre half partnership in the championship, please tell me what it is because I can't think what it is. And which yeah. better does Bielik play at the back though, as well? Yeah, he does. He's got. Does I think he, he, yeah, because I think he's got great vision, Billy. Yeah. And at midfield, I don't think he gets enough time to look and pick the passes. But I think at, in the centre back, he's got the whole pitch in front of him. He's the captain. He, you've seen it several times. If he can't find something, he just takes it forward himself. And I can't remember the game now, but I mean to see Clara galloping down the right yeah. wing with the ball was like, fucking uh -huh. okay, you know, hell! Like you know what's going on here? Like, you know. But that's the confidence issue, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Is anyone worried about this injury with Bielik? Does anyone know how long he's potentially out for, or was he took off for precaution? I, I think he, I think it was a knock. He played on, so I don't think it was that bad. But okay. uh, uh, and I think when he went off, I think Ben Davis did a pretty good job. You know, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a very strong run of the mill centre half. Yeah, you know, he's nothing special. He's no Clara, yeah. no Bielik, but he did a good job. But I think I don't think it's going to be anything too serious, but we'll find out hopefully like today uh, yeah. when he's reported for training, just see what what the results of his tests are. Good news as well, Peg signed a new contract as well as today. Yeah, point, year, yeah, another four year uh, deal, which is brilliant because weren't Leeds sniffing around for him as well. There's a few clubs, aren't there? Yeah. Well, I think that's a great signing. I mean, we've got an absolute Rolls Royce there, and we what a great player, yeah. Peg. Yeah. Yeah, he really is, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think we miss um Miyoshi? No. Where does <laughs> I knew who you were gonna say that. <laughs> and where does uh Sanderson fit into this equation as well when he like if he gets picked as well? Steve and Nick, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. I think I think with my Marshi, I don't think he suited the way we played too well. I mean he's a nice player, Marshy, you know, but I just don't think he plays that he he doesn't suit that touch and pass game that well. I yeah. think Sanderson's going to be struggling to get back anywhere near the team, to be honest with you. You know, I think it's his third or fourth choice centre half at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so the answer to that is I think they're going to struggle to get back in. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, someone mentioned it on one of my streams the other day about Sanderson coming straight back into the side. And I was. Okay. I was, I was quite baffled by it. I was like, I'd, I'd be surprised if he makes a bench. Um, I, don't no, I, don't think think, I don't think he will, uh, uh, to be honest, Nick. I don't think he will. No, I don't think he made the bench on Saturday anyway. But, um, yeah, I mean, he, he's going to struggle to get in, in the side, mate. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes in the in the winter, in the January, or he goes... And then see, this is not me having a go at him or anything. He just doesn't fit the style, style of play. He's not comfortable on the ball. Um, I mean, it, it, to be fair to him, he did have a good pre-season, didn't he? Pinging them diagonals yeah, out. He, um, he was just unlucky for him. He got injured because he would have probably stayed in that side for a little while. And then I'd imagine, um, you know, Clara's unreal, mate. Do you know what I mean? Clara, it, it, eventually, uh, Davis would have seen the, the the quality of Clara, and he would have took he would have took uh, Sanderson's place. But it's un un unfortunate for Dion, man. Do you know what I mean? He gets a lot of stick, and and 
And I, I, I quite like the guy. Um, yeah. you know, I, I don't like any of them getting stick like that. You know, it, nah. it's warranted. You don't need to pull nah. them to pieces. If they haven't played well, just say why you think they haven't played well. And that's the yes, end of it. Yeah. But, yeah, I, but yeah. I think with Sanderson, I don't think he's big enough. I don't think he's, he's athletic enough. And I don't think he's sure enough for this passing. He, you know, we've seen him at those diagonals, but to consistently do that game after yeah. game after game and to have the strength against big centre halves, which Bielik, uh, centre forwards, which Bielik and Clara have both got. I don't think Dion's got enough. He's not a big enough man, you know, mm. Physi physically, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was on about this with my dad as well, Stephen. Like, when we was watching him last season, we just thought like he just looked like he was just a bit short of pace. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sorry, Nick. Come on. No, 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 it's fine. I, um, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. He's lacking pace and and um, his concentration on the ball as well. You know, and, and like I say, it's not digging him out. I just uh -oh. don't don't see him getting back in his side. I just, I just don't. Unless we're hampered with injuries, he doesn't. He doesn't start over Ben Davies for me. No, uh, no. I don't know what you think, Steve? No, I agree with that. And I think the other pressure that you probably don't think about is the pressure the players have when they haven't been playing, when they're bought into that team, when it's playing like it is. Yeah. You know, you imagine if you come into that and you watch that one touch football and you watch how lovely they and you know how lovely the football is and how they move it about and how they look for space and they find it. You're gonna come into that, you've got to think think, I've got to fit into that absolutely brilliantly old machine at the moment, you know? Yeah. And there's pressure on them in that respect. Yeah. So you know, but the, but that's what it is. What we're doing is going to bring pressure to players. It's going to bring pressure to management. It's going to bring pressure to everyone. But that's what you do when you're successful. If you're kicking about at the bottom of the league, nobody gives a shite what you do. But, you know, eyes are on us. We've got to perform. Yeah, yeah. What's your thoughts on um, Chris Davis as well? Because obviously it's his first managerial role on his own as well. Um, going for it. What's your thoughts with... Chris and that, uh, Steve, because we haven't spoke since the Rangers game. Um, we've obviously played a few games since then. Like, how he portrays himself on the presses and stuff as well. And like, how he is with the team. It looks like he's got that bond with the players. And it looks yeah, like I think, right, and well. I, I think he's trying to build that bond with the with the fans as well. The yeah. kind of thing that John Eustace had, you know, where you go to the fans, that they receive you. And, and, and that's what he does all the time now. He's, you, you know, with the with the with the players, he goes up, he gets involved himself, which is brilliant. Uh, the test is now he's lost his first game as a manager, yeah. So uh, you know, hopefully that's reversed straight away, and we just get straight back on starting another run. Uh, but this is the test. The press, he's never had pressure like this before. He's always been uh, Pasta Coglu or or or, or um. You know, whoever the manager's been working with, I'm trying to think of the geezer's name. Brendan, Brendan, yeah, Brendan Rogers. You know, but uh, it's, it's interesting because I, I, I've watched a few Spurs uh, fan sites and a lot of the Spurs fans are complaining because Davis went. They think that's why the Spurs game has broken down because they haven't got their, his influence on it, on it anymore. Oh, OK. That's that. Yeah, having said that, though, fans will pick up on anything yeah. if yeah, yeah. are doing well to, you know, to blame someone. I don't know. Nick, you reckon so? Yeah, well, I'm just really pleased with, with the first 10 games. You know, I don't, I don't know if you caught it earlier. Like, um, you know, it was always to get to these first 10 games. And, and for me personally, being touching distance in and around that top two, you know, especially with the amount of players we brought in. So so to be where we are, top of the league, a couple of points uh, above Wrexham, game in hand, uh, the, the the loss at the weekend is no biggie, do you know? It, it really isn't. Um, like Steve said, it's, it's now about bouncing back and, and I believe that we will bounce back, do you know? Uh, I, I, I think we'll... We'll go on and comfortably win the league, and and I haven't really said that um, this season. I think we're all, I think we're all, and I think we played some of the better teams as well. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah, we have. I mean, this this run. Sorry, Jay. This run, I was um, I I actually picked out as as a really difficult run. Do you know what I mean? And hence why well, I was saying Peter Hudders, Peterborough Huddersfield. You know, they were all going to be up there, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, and and like I say, we've come out of it with. With I don't know what was it seven seven wins on the bounce and then the last so we, we you can't crumble you know oh. I don't go on Twitter mate and and see the meltdown from from Saturday so uh it, I 
luckily I've been I've been really busy and I haven't had time to to go on Twitter and see the reaction to the the, the defeat at the weekend. But um, no, no 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 worries for me at all. I think we're all we're all on the same page. Uh, really happy with the manager, the players, uh, the. The atmosphere down the ground. I think everything's shiny, man. And uh, like I say, jump on board, man, because it's going to be one hell of a ride. I mean, put yourself in Steve's position as well, because you run the project, don't you, Steve? Well, there's like fifteen thousand people on there now. Absolutely, yeah. But I mean, you know how we run our group, Joe. We don't take yeah. any shit from people slagging off the players and all that business. Uh, and to be honest, like it, it's been a reflective. Our posts have been pretty reflective and understanding. They haven't been, but I have looked in other groups, and there's people absolutely in meltdown, you know. And and uh, I just don't really? get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have a look yourself. I can imagine one game. I can imagine, mate. But people, for some reason, just can't wait to jump on. It. There's always a scapegoat, isn't there? It was, it was Peacock Farrell a couple of weeks ago. We've seen it early in the season with Sanderson. Uh, you know, they've always got to have someone to have a go at. It'll be someone else next year. I don't know why they have to do that. Uh, players have enough pressure on them without having the fans jumping on the back for no reason. If they play, you know, if someone plays badly, just say they didn't play a particularly good game and this is the reason why I don't think they did. That's it. You don't need to be slagging. Yeah. I mean, look at Scott Hogan. He got absolutely crucified, you know. Did, yeah. Whatever you think of him as a player, it doesn't matter. But he's a person as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that, really and you've got to think as well, Steve. That that they're, they're only young kids, like Deion Sanderson, twenty four year, years old, of age. Yeah, he made a big mistake, but Jesus Christ, it's like he's committed a murder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When, when he got done for that drink driving, and the the abuse he's got, he had for for his um. Anyway, that's a different subject, mate. It, it's one of them, in it like uh. I, for me personally, I I never out the players like um some 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 of our fans do, but uh you know other than that man it, it, it's it's going to be a great I I've just got a feeling it's going to be a great season. It's it, we're definitely on the rise, man, and um we, we're going up. I would say that I'll put my neck on the line and say we're definitely going up. Mm. Um, it's just how we do it, and and hopefully we do it. I I like to see us perhaps score a few more goals and win games by more than one goal. I think that that would be nice, you know. But listen, if you win every game by one goal, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you points, like last season, Portsmouth, I think went up with. I think they won the league with ninety five points, and they lost five games last season. Now, I said at the start of the season, we don't want to lose any more than five games, and I don't think we will. No. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember when we was talking about that, Stephen. You was uh, saying that, weren't you? We have to lose so many games to get. So many points to get the automatic promotion. If we only lose five games, I think we're definitely automatic. Yeah. Superb. Um, lads, I've got a question for you, because I've spoken about this a few times um, with my dad and stuff, and um, his mate Steve as well. Uh, how does this feel different with like the ownership and stuff? Also going uh, hand in hand with the relegation into League One. To how it was back when we had uh, Barry Fry and stuff like how how does this like, I mean like the sense of like belief that we're on the up like the club's on the rise like, how does this feel different from your Blues experience, Stephen? Nick? Well, I mean for me it, it looks totally different. It feels totally different because yeah. although we had the goals uh, and Sullivan and the goals had taken over, so it was a similar sort of scenario. Uh, they didn't have the kind of money to put into the club. Uh, all right, they built the rebuilt the ground, which was amazing, you know. But they didn't have the kind of mega money that Knight had have got. I think it's on a completely different level. And um, when we we're in the in the old Division Three, uh, we didn't steamroller it pretty that way, you know. We struggled, uh, uh, and you know, blah, blah blah. It's all history. But I just think it's different. I think it's a much bigger thing this time. Yeah, mm. Nick. Yeah, yeah, completely, uh, completely agree. It just seems completely different um, in terms of 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 the future, the long term future. I'm talking about, you know, yeah, it, it was great times then, nineties. You know, I went to both the cup finals. Uh, look, great, great memories. Do you know what I mean? Um, but this just feels bigger, different. This this feels like uh, like Gary Cup uses the world, uh, the the word sorry, world class. Do you know, 
Um, so yeah, man, just look, the, the future's bright, do you know what I mean, Jay? And um, yeah, man, it, 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 it feels completely different, it really does. I mean, have you been speaking to um, Jeremy Dyle and stuff, Steve? So now that you're quite, quite good with the club and stuff, aren't you? Look, is there anything that you can share for yeah, him? Yeah, Jeremy Dyle actually moved to the foundation now, so we don't deal with him quite so much, but we still deal with the club directly. And uh, and yeah, you know, I mean, they have the official supporters club, which is their thing. But, you, you know, we have a, a, a fairly big fan, fan base in our group. So, you know, I mean, you can't, you, you can't ignore that size of group. I mean, you can, but we have a lot of interaction with the club. So, you know, we support the club 100%, but if we think something is wrong, we tell them. Yeah. Now, when we get, you know, members come to us and tell us this happened, that happened, we're not happy with this, we're not happy with that. You, you know, we find stuff out, blah, 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 and we just email the club directly. And 95% of the time, they come directly back to me and they explain the situation and, and that's all we need. We're... um. We're coming close to the per um, Birmingham bombings as well again, aren't we, Steve? The Remembrance Day. Um, is there anything that we can do to um, contribute well, well, and share with that as well? Or Make people as aware as you can. I mean, the 21st, it's, we work with Justice for the 21, as you know, the 21st of November at 2pm. Uh, yeah. We're having a complete close down in terms of one minute silence across Birmingham. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, take the opportunity to take, to take that minute silence. And at the moment, we're in negotiation with the club about trying to find when we can do something at St Andrews because, unfortunately, Stevenage game has been moved. Yeah. So that was the one that we were targeting to perhaps have a ceremony, uh, armbands and stuff like that. So, you know, as soon as we know more, then we'll keep everyone uh, advised. And we've been, us as a group as well, we've been talking to the Villa. Villa have promised us they're going to do something. So Beck's been big on that front. Uh, talk, um, talk with Lee Priest at the villa. Um, so uh, Lee has come back and told us they're definitely doing something, they're just trying to put it together at the moment. So we're all sitting really with bated breath, waiting to see what they're both going to do. Yeah, have the club been better with you this time, Stephen, in terms of the 21? Because I know when we've done a few podcasts uh, last season, like you was doing a lot of work with the club and stuff to try and bring. Bring away yeah. a and... I, mean, I have to say that it took us a lot of work to get what we got. Um, I think there's there's just a little bit of reluctance from everyone to be involved in it. Uh, we're not reluctant, you know. I think the club are, are worried about it being political or well, it's not political at all. You, you know, it's like the Manchester bombings weren't political. You, you know, some loads of people got murdered. There was a political belief behind it, you know, but. At the end of the day, it's something that the club should respect. Uh, 21 people were, were murdered, you know, uh, and, and they're all mixture of Blues and Villa fans and mixture of just normal people. And I think the club have a certain duty to the uh, to the Birmingham public to just respect it. It's not, you know, it's not asking for a lot. Yeah, no, it's bang on, mate. Yeah, yeah well, um, when's that again, Steve? The 21st of November, isn't it? 21st of November is the yeah. 50th, uh, is the marks the 50th year since the bombings. Yeah, we spoke to Maxine and stuff as well. Is she okay? Is she well? It's Julie, of course. Maxine is the Sorry, name. Yeah, she Julie, yeah. Maxine's a sister, isn't it? Well, her sister who was murdered was yeah. that was called Max Maxine. Yeah, Julie's still Sorry. involved, and we're all trying to get stuff together now. Pete Hannon as well, and Beck is involved. So all of us at the moment have got our shoulders to the wheel trying to get stuff done. And uh, Julie drives it. We all do our part. And at the end of the day, uh, hopefully we're going to get some sort of results out of it. What, whatever happens, uh, we're going to have that minute silence on the 21st at 2 p.m. Yeah. No matter what the outcome of what any, what anyone does, you know, anyone can do that. Wherever you are, at work, at home, just take that minute. Mm. It's just respect. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad that they're getting more awareness out there and stuff, Dave. And uh, the work you do is just... Uh... Brilliant, mate. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we, we do it, you know, it, it, we do it with a lot of other people. You know, it, there's an awful lot of people that support justice. Uh, it's just getting it sorted and getting it done, you know. Last one, lads, before we go. Are we going to win the league? For, for me, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I, I, I was pretty hesitant in terms of even predicting us to go up. You know, um, I've seen enough in these first nine, ten games to, to yeah, um, to to comfortably um, finish in the top two. You know, if not win the league. Um, you know, it's a good barometer to go off the first ten games, especially with a load of new players. In what we've what we've got, so uh, yeah, for me, comfortably we go up. Uh, I just hope it don't come to fucking bite me arse now. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> I, yeah, I think we will. I think we'll win the league, uh, and I, I'm saying that as well, not just from what I've seen of Blues, but I've seen from my opposition as well. I don't think there's a team that's anywhere near us in terms of football. So, yeah, I think we're going to comfortably get promoted. Superb, lads. Lads, I've uh, really enjoyed uh, talking to you both. Um, thank you for giving up your time to talk to me. Yeah, no problem, I think you two John, met each other as well for the first time. Yeah, yeah. It's been good, you know, and uh, it's always good to get here together sometimes and get the views of other people because uh, all of our views are valid, aren't they? It doesn't matter whether you agree with them or not. Everyone's view is valid. No, yeah. honestly, like, I appreciate both of you giving up your time to me to do these with me, honestly. It means a lot to me, like. No problem. Thank you. Love you both. Yeah, man. Cheers, mate. All the best. All the best. Keep right on, lads. Keep right. Okay, right on. Hey, my man, my man, my man. Who's that? Me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, boy. Whenever we go, we go. Oh, you're Tony and Dad. Best fucking habits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, boy. 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 Hello, boy